right to peacefully assemble. Any person who believes in peace, justice, and civil rights for all is welcome here. This is a nonviolent event, and it's up to everyone working together to create safety for all of us. We follow Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s fundamental principles of nonviolence, which are nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. Nonviolence seeks to win friendship and understanding. Nonviolence seeks to defeat injustice, not people. Nonviolence holds that suffering can educate and transform. Nonviolence chooses love instead of hate. Nonviolence believes that the universe is on the side of justice. During this event today, if anyone tries to disrupt or denigrate what we're doing, don't engage. Just walk away, see one of our rally volunteers wearing a blue sash, or one of the park rangers. They're here to answer your questions and assist you. Also, you can just shout rise up, and all those folks around you will answer your call to rise up. If you'd like a free copy of Dr. King's Principles, please visit our table right here. And while you're there, please join our mailing list if you haven't already. Please visit the other tables that are over there by the, um, in the middle of those trees next to the greenhouse. Um, those folks are organizing uh, civil rights and social justice organizations who are doing great work in our state. Please check them out and get involved. We also encourage you to use our social media. Please use the hashtags RiseUpRI and WMWRI and look for our Snapchat chat geotag to let your friends know you're celebrating Women's History Month by continuing to make it. Um, up there on the street, uh, across from the greenhouse, on this side of the street are food trucks, so if you get hungry there are snacks, there are porter potties behind you, trash cans and recycling bins all over the park, so uh, please dispose of your waste appropriately. And if you see a full trash can, please tell somebody in a, in a blue sash so we can make sure we leave the park as clean as we found it. Um, one last thing, there's a section there with orange cones for those folks who have ability issues. So please just be aware and try not to block sight lines to the stage. So, a lot's been happening since the Women's March on Washington, the Solidarity Rally in January, huh? Yeah! <laughs> To give you an update on the National Women's March and the Rhode Island Chapter, please welcome the founder of Women's March in Rhode Island, Chapter Coordinator, Nancy Rapp. Hey, those of us who are vertically challenged. Um, hi, my name is Nancy Rapey. Hello, Rhode Island. Here we are. First, there were over five million of us who marched and made our voices heard. Were you part of it? Yeah. Since then, National Women's March has focused on 10 actions in 100 days. And our first actions were to call and write our legislators about human rights issues, to introduce ourselves to them, and to let them know that we're watching what they're doing. We've also developed huddles, which are small work groups that are all over the state where we can plan actions with like-minded folks and focus on political happenings at the town levels. Women's March Rhode Island holds an information meeting every Sunday at the Providence Public Library. And huddles are happening at various times throughout the state. And to connect to them or get more information, you can visit our website at riwomensmarch.com. So how many of you wrote or called a political official, or participated in some kind of social action. Good for you. That's great. Is anybody feeling overwhelmed by it yet? Yeah, you know, we get it. Believe me, we get it. But the unrelenting nature of prolonged resistance is not something you ever really think about. But it's important to stay involved. Remember, we have sisters and brothers who don't have the luxury of stepping away from this struggle. So events like rallies and marches are important ways to show solidarity and strength through unity. They remind us what we're fighting for, a common ground where all are free to be themselves. And they can help recharge us for the struggles ahead, and we know we're going to have them. Back in January, as we planned the trip to DC and the rally here at home, we knew for those events to have meaning that the work must continue. And we'll continue to work peacefully though we recognize that there's no true peace without justice and equality for everybody. 
So if you've never been here to the Roger Williams National Memorial before, we encourage you to go inside the greenhouse and check out the new display entitled New and Dangerous Opinions. Those new and dangerous opinions were religious freedom, tolerance, and equality of all people. From his reading of the New Testament, in which Christ had commanded religion, religious truth and error to coexist in every nation until the end of the world, Roger Williams concluded that liberty of conscience, soul liberty, as he called it, was necessary because no one could know for certain which form of religion was the true one God intended. If there's no definitive answer, then there's no right or wrong. And if I'm free to follow my soul where it will lead, then so are you. Our founding fathers thought liberty of conscience so important they enshrined it in the very first amendment to the Constitution. They knew that nothing is more of a threat to tyranny than a people whose souls are free. You'll notice these ladies standing beside me. They represent those of our foremothers who followed their souls to achieve the vote for women. They represent the progress made and the progress yet to come. They represent what is exalted in us and what is flawed as well. 72 years. That's how long it took for women in the United States to get the vote. 72 years. From the passage of the first resolution proposing women's suffrage at the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848 to the ratification of the 19th Amendment on August 20th, 1920, Women of all races fought tirelessly for a seat at the political table. Except, not all women of all races reaped the benefit. In fact, after working tirelessly alongside their white sisters, Ida B. Wells and other black suffragettes were asked to march at the back of the parade held in 1913. And while the 19th Amendment granted all women the right to vote, it wouldn't be until the Civil Rights Movement, almost another 40 years, before women of color were truly enfranchised. So while we honor our feminist past, we serve the future best by learning from our mistakes. No movement is immune to the weaknesses of, our, of its leaders, ours included. White feminists need to own that women of color and other historically marginalized communities are suspicious of our motives, and rightly so. Until we own our past, look it square in the face, and commit to doing things differently, we'll never be fully a part of the truly inclusive movement to which we aspire. And today, I saw a meme on Facebook where um, there's all these missing black and brown women from Washington, D.C., and there was a meeting that was held there last night, and the only people who showed up were black and brown people in Washington, where the Women's March was held two months ago. We have to do better. So on behalf of feminists everywhere, we recognize with deepest apologies and gratitude the contributions of Sojourner Truth, Ida Bell Wells Barnett, Mary Eliza Church Terrell, Mary Ann Shad Carey, Nanny, Nanny Helen Burroughs, Frances Ellen Watkins Harper, Daisy Elizabeth Adams Lampkin, and all the other women of color without whom the passage of the 19th Amendment would not have been possible. I'm just going to wait for that train to stop speaking if you don't mind. I'll compete, but. It's a long time, too. <laughs> anyway, okay. This checkered history is our legacy. As feminists in the 21st century, we must strive for full political participation and representation for all women, lesbian, straight, bi, or asexual, trans, cis, or gender nonconforming, of any religion and no religion, of all abilities and of the one race, the human race.
Our foremothers fought to give that to us. They fought their inner demons and their outer foes. They fought the patriarchy and racism. They were unsuccessful for over a hundred years. They put their bodies on the line to birth a new nation where all women are created equal and can go to the ballot box and say so. It's a precious gift. What gifts will we leave? What fights will we win? What fights will we leave unwon? Number 45 has been in office for 64 days. In that time, he and the Republican-dominated Congress have actively worked to dismantle our Constitution and our fundamental rights. But we are Rhode Islanders. We know petty tyrants have no strength against liberty of conscience. And we are women. We know that an unwavering commitment to justice can change history. Will you fight on? Will we fight on together? Will you resist hate and oppression in all forms, whether it's those in the opposition or within our own hearts? Will you rise up for a better world? Well, all right.